Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. All for leadership and team development speakers, you will be coming to you from another key moments for faith. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this broadcast. Before we go any further, I want to make sure I invite you to click on the subscribe button there below. Share this video, share this channel with your friends, your family, your enemies, and maybe they'll become your friends. This channel is all about exalting God, edifying, and equipping the believer. Before we get into today's lesson, I want to share some exciting news with you. Something that I know is going to uh, really help take this channel to another level. Uh, we're right now in a testing process of getting some things together starting in May. In May. Uh, we're going to be really opening up this format and I'm going to be bringing in uh, guests who I will be interviewing and conversating with uh, where we're presenting uh, really some very powerful, potent faith building messages all about building your faith. Uh, people who are leaders in uh, their industry who are representing the kingdom uh, in a way that is effective and uh, beneficial. Uh, to the body of Christ, and so these are going to be some very exciting days. I want you to look forward to that. Invite your friends, invite your family, and I don't say invite your enemies because we're really getting ready to step it up a notch and do some things that are really going to impact people's lives. I want to see you, it is my distinct desire to see you walk in the fullness of the blessings of the Lord in every area of your life. And it would be spiritual malpractice on my behalf uh, to have this uh, to have this format, to have this platform, and not to do everything that I can to continue to enhance uh, the product that I am delivering you uh, and to add value to your life. And that's what it's about. We're all here on this journey together. And I want to add value to your life, value to your walk. I want to see you be all that you can be in Christ Jesus. There's the old commercial that came on TV that says, be all that you can be in the army. But I want to see where you can be in the Lord. Because he has great plans for all of our lives. But we need the skills, the knowledge, the know-how, the inspiration, the aspiration. Uh, and like I said, the practical knowledge, the wisdom that it takes to get us there. And so I've made it a point to surround myself with individuals who will continue to challenge me and to grow me and to stretch me. And I want to bring some of those people uh, into your life. So I've already been talking to uh, several individuals. I have, uh, already have some uh, people lined up that you, uh, I know you're going to find very exciting and really inspirational. So I want to encourage you on that. Moving on to today's topic. And I promise it's not going to be a super long video. Uh, it's actually late here, and so I just really want to get into today's topic. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the blessing in persecution, the blessings in persecution. And it's a topic that a lot of believers don't like to talk about. It's a topic that a lot of pastors don't like to talk about, a lot of ministers don't want to talk about, uh, because in much of modern Western Christianity, uh, we like to talk more about comfort over commitment, comfort over consistency, uh, comfort over conversion. And so we really focus so much on those topics and that we don't get to the, to the meat, uh, to the substance of what it is to truly be a believer through the eyes of Christ himself and those who walk the closest with him. Uh, and so it's so important that we grasp hold of this. You know, scripture says that all who desire to live godly, all who choose to live godly are going to suffer persecution. As a matter of fact, when we read to you from 2 Timothy, the third chapter and the 12th verse, uh, and this is the amplified version, and it says, indeed, all who delight in pursuing righteousness and are determined to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be hunted and persecuted because of their faith. They're going to be hunted and persecuted because of their faith. 
this is a part of the Christian walk that we don't like to discuss because we want to keep people coming back to our churches. We want to continue to fill our sanctuaries. But the truth is, we're all going to face persecution on some level uh, by some person, by some group, by some system. It's always going to happen because that's what, what it means, a part of what it means to be a believer. Yes, God wants to prosper you as your soul prospers. Yes, God wants to continue to bless you. And God wants you to have the desires of your heart. Uh, and so that is absolutely accurate. At the same time, what comes along with the gift of salvation and the choice, the choice we make to commit our lives to following the Lord Jesus is you're going to face persecution. Some people will face persecution that they will may seem almost unbearable. Some may not, but we're all going to face some level of persecution in our lives. You know, even today, there are people who are overseas in countries where they are not committed to worship openly. There are underground churches in places like China and other places where uh, openly stating that you are a Christian uh, is a risk or could risk your life. There are government officials, police officers who will come and take you away, family members who will rat you out to the authorities and they will take you and put you in prison or uh, work camp or outright execute you if you make the public declaration that you are a believer. Here in the United States, throughout much of the Western uh, world of Christianity, uh, we don't know what that is like. We have not experienced that. We have actually lived in relative comfort compared to most of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. For us, persecution may mean something like people looking at us weird or making us feel uncomfortable or telling us that we can't pray at a certain public event, uh, you know, and that may be about the extent of it. And even though that is a form, a legitimate form of persecution, there are so many people, so many brothers and sisters who are overseas and who are other places who, uh, for them, that sort of persecution is child's play because their lives are truly in danger and they risk it all when they commit to following the Lord Jesus. But the fact of the matter is that even in our circumstances, the things that we look at and say, ah, this is really not major persecution. In this country, in the United States of America, and in much of, much of Western, the Western culture, it is becoming increasingly, increasingly uh, more hostile toward those who profess to follow the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. You see it in our college campuses where professors blatantly uh, teach messages or present points of view that are hostile toward the history of Christianity, toward the history of Christ, where they challenge our belief systems, they challenge who we are, our character, our integrity. We see that on our jobs, uh, where uh, our bosses or our managers uh, challenge us, our level of commitment uh, to our faith. So if you're truly committed to the faith and you need to have the Sabbath off and it's an important part of your walk, uh, in some cases they may not hire you, they may not give you a position, uh, or they're going to outright mock you for taking that time off and saying, why can't you get with your game plan? Notice they will not do that with other faiths, but they do this especially with the Christian faith because there is something unique about our faith. There is something unique about our walk. Even those who pro profess and proclaim that Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are all the same, even they say that there is something unique about Christianity. There's something unique about those Christians. They can't put their finger on it, but they really don't like us. And so this is a very real thing. I want to encourage those of you who are out who are facing some of these issues, whether it's being uh, being black or being the black sheep of the family because you decided that you're going to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, 
where there's problems that are going on in your job where you may be getting harassed, and I've been there before, where you may be harassed by your boss or your coworkers even, who uh, will say things or make comments about your faith and about who you are and who may test your character just to show you up and prove that you're not as committed of a Christian as you profess to be. Uh, or even in the government where there are laws and there are rules and are regulations that are passed in the Congress or our local assemblies uh, that restrict our ability and our rights to our uh, religious freedoms. Uh, in any of those areas, I encourage you to stand strong in the faith, to do not back down, that there is indeed a blessing. There is indeed a blessing in persecution. There's a blessing in being persecuted for the namesake of Jesus Christ. So I wanna give you some points here that I want you to really pay attention to. And I really believe that they're going to inspire you, motivate you, encourage you as you're going through whatever level of persecution it may be. You know, even when you're standing on faith and you're facing a difficult time. You know, there's been times when I've had to make decisions, some very difficult decisions, some very tough decisions. And I'm just standing on faith because I believe the word of God. And people are looking at me as if I'm crazy, as if I've lost my ever living mind. How could you think that such a thing is possible? You know, why don't you give up or go to another direction or whatever it is? And I'm just standing on the word. And that's a very difficult place to be, especially when you're standing alone, when other people don't understand. And they're saying, well, why don't you just, why don't you just lay it all down? That's, that's a very tough place to be. But I promise you that if you stand on the word of God and if you're honorable before the Lord, that's what's key. You know, it's one thing to be persecuted because you're being dishonorable and unjust and a lack of character. It's a completely different thing to be persecuted for the namesake of Jesus. So point number one is persecution will come. Jesus promises it. The disciples promised it. When they became apostles, they promised it. Persecution will come. It's a part of life. Uh, no matter whether you're rich or poor or somewhere in the middle, black, white, Hispanic is irrelevant. Persecution is going to come in life. I mean, for goodness sake, if you look at the what happened with the disciples who had become the apostles, all but one were killed. All but one were executed. Peter and Paul uh, were beheaded. And the others were executed in some way. John was the only one who lived out the rest of his days on the earth as into, his, into old age. Outside of that, they all persecuted him. When John even was left was uh, was, a, was a left alive, he was uh, he was put in isolation. Uh, and so they knew what real persecution was in comparison to. Uh, where we are here in America, in Canada, in Mexico, and most of these, most of our Western nations, uh, they knew what it was. They knew what it meant to face the sword for what you believe in. But because of their experience with the Lord Jesus, because of their walk with the Lord Jesus, because they had an encounter, a genuine encounter. Most of us, if someone think if someone threatens to take away our Plato, we'll turn our backs on the Lord. And that's maybe a harsh statement, but that's, that's reality. But these people literally faced the sword. They literally faced condemnation. They faced execution. And yet, and still, they were willing to stand on the word. They were willing to stand on their principles because they had a true encounter with Jesus. This was not just a shake or a feeling. This was not just an emotional response. They had an encounter. And if you have an encounter with the Lord, a true encounter with the Lord, you will be able to stand in the face of persecution. So persecution is going to come. Number two, perse persecution. Uh, God honors those who are willing to face persecution. God honors those who are willing to face persecution. He is not just going to leave you out there by yourself. He honors you. There is a rich, rich reward that awaits you. 
here in this life and in the afterlife. He honors those who are willing to stand against persecution or stand up and be persecuted. Uh, because again, as I said, persecution is going to come. And he really blesses those who face really harsh persecution. Like as I said before, what we what we deal with here in this country is marginal compared to what other people deal with in other countries. Uh, we 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 turn our backs on Jesus from Plato, you know, and and these people are literally facing the sword. Uh, some people in countries are being crucif crucified. Yes, even today, people are being enslaved. People are being turned over into child uh, sex slavery. All sorts of things are happening to them because they dare, because they dare stand up and say, I believe that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And because the people despise the Christian faith so much, because they despise believers so much, uh, you know, they are willing to hurt them and harm them and take their property and do all sorts of horrific things to them. But I, I speak blessings over my brothers and sisters who are willing to stand up and face the persecution. But God honors those who are willing to face persecution for his name's sake. The third point is God blesses the, persecute, uh, blesses the persecuted. There are a unique set of uh, blessings that come to those who are persecuted. One of those blessings is he gives you divine strength. We wonder how our ancestors were able to stand up under the pressures, uh, the pressures of, of uh, slavery, the pressures, the pressures of oppression, the pressures of uh, the pressures of, of their lands being uh, taken away, or the pressures of their families being broken apart, the pressures of, uh, of, of viruses and and plagues and all those things how were they able to stand those things well they were able to stand that because they were truly submitted to the lord jesus christ they were truly submitted that's why they were not uh, people that broke easily because in their in their weakness he was their strength in their troubles he brought peace uh, in their distress he brought comfort and yes because they were in those situations. Uh, people will look today and say, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how it's possible. I don't know how they overcame. They overcame, as it says in the book of Revelation, they overcame because of their testimony. They overcame because of the blood of the lamb. That's how they were able to do it. Because of the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, they were able to stand in that gap. They were able to stand up with their, their chest out their back straight and say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. And because of that, we are where we are today. Unfortunately, many of us, because we have uh, no historical context of where we come from, uh, we look at the past and think that's just the way things used to be. We don't want to look at it. We don't want to think about the past. But those who don't, who don't remember the past are bound to repeat some of those very hard lessons that our ancestors had to learn. We need to value our faith, value our freedom, because those things can be taken away easily. When you look what's going on with this, uh, this, this coronavirus thing, no matter which side of the aisle you're on, no matter what your opinion is, the fact of the matter is people are willing to give up their rights for the public good very easily, very easily. If you look what happened in 9-11, uh, after 9-11, what happened then? You did have the introduction of the Patriot Act. You had other incidences where uh, governments come in and say, for your good, we're going to take away some of your rights. And people are all too willing to do that without asking questions. But again, this is not a political uh, statement as much as it is a faith statement. What am I saying is that when troubles come, the oppressions can come, and if you're not praying, and if you're not going before the Lord, just like that, all your freedoms can be gone, and then you may find yourself in an underground church. You may find yourself banned from public assembly. You may find yourself banned from praying publicly, from meeting with, uh, from legally meeting with other members of the body of Christ. So we need to be cognizant of that. We need to remember that. But God blesses those individuals with courage. 
He blesses them with strength. He blesses them with supernatural ability to walk through fires that you and I could never have thought were possible, but they walk through those things. And you know what? If we face those type of persecutions today, God will bless us with that same type of ability. But He blesses those individuals. He gives them longevity. He gives them life. Uh, when others around them are dying, He gives them life. And so God blesses those who are persecuted. My fourth and final point is God vindicates those who are persecuted. He vindicates those who are persecuted. Isn't that a wonderful thing? When you're being challenged and your character is being attacked and the enemy is coming after you, he vindicates you. Let me tell you something. I have found myself in situations where there were rumors, misrepresentations. I'm sure, sure some of you have faced the same thing. Rumors, mis misrepresentation, outright, outright lies, manipulation, manipulation, all sorts of things were said about me uh, that were painful and that I knew were not true and, and, and disturbing and it damaged my ability to perform maybe my job or, or uh, you know, how people looked at me changed. And so those were very hurtful things. But at the end of the day, God always vindicated me one way or another. Whether it took a, a couple of weeks, days, months, or even years, there was always a point of vindication that God brought, uh, brought me. And he's done that time and time again, not just for me, but other people who have been around me, friends of mine, family members of mine, uh, people who have come and testified about their, their particular events. God will vindicate you one way or another. And when you stand for righteousness, when you stand for Jesus, when you stand for truth, then you will be vindicated one way or another. You know, it's so funny, the scripture says, whatever happens in the dark is going to come to the light. What is that? That is your vindication, my brother and my sister. That is your freedom. That is the that is the enemy being forced to acknowledge that this person, this person is righteous and clean under the blood of the Lamb. This person, this individual is innocent under the blood of the Lamb. In and of ourselves, we are not innocent, but because the blood of Jesus has washed over us and cleansed us and made us brand new, we are no longer condemned. And I did a message on that in an earlier video about the difference between conviction and condemnation. But because we have been redeemed and we have been restored, we are no longer condemned as believers. And so, uh, so there is always a point of vindication that comes. And yes, while you're going through the struggle, while you're being persecuted, let me tell you something, it hurts. Uh, there have been things or, or that have been said about me that, boy, I tell you, uh, had me shedding some tears, some serious tears, when I wasn't around anybody and sometimes when I was around people. I remember going through a situation in my life that was so, uh, so stressful, uh, so hurtful. I was sitting in the mid middle of a meeting, a very important meeting with all these people who were around me. And they asked me to speak on uh, speak on something that needed to be presented. And when I opened my mouth, I just started crying. I I mean, that's how much pressure I was under. That's how much stress I was under uh, at that particular point. And I had to excuse myself. And people were saying it's okay, it's okay, because people didn't know how much pressure I was under. I mean, I felt the the assault of the enemy coming after me. I mean, there were all sorts of lies and uh, misrepresentations and uh, and misleading and, and all sorts of things that were happening. And I'm feeling this pressure and I'm looking around I'm like, God, where are you? I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. I don't know how much more of this I can take to that point where, like I said, I was in this meeting and I just broke down in tears because I felt like I couldn't take any more. But guess what? Even through that situation, God blessed me. He gave me supernatural strength and supernatural ability to stand up and say, for Christ I live, for Christ I die. And yes, this pressure is on me, but you know what? I'm standing on the word. And at the end of the day, he vindicated me. Through that persecution, when all these eyes were on me and said, yeah, he must have done what they said he did. Yeah, he was wrong. Yeah, we, we you know what I'm saying? I always kind of knew there was something going on there. But there were all of these assumptions that were going on around me. 
rid of all these accusations. God vindicated me through that. And I'm here today to say he can vindicate you and he will vindicate you as well. So I pray that you've gotten something out of this broadcast. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, in May, we're going to really be kicking it into high gear. We're going to be having some interviews, some really powerful interviews for some believers. They have testimonies and their stories and the words of wisdom are going to be life-changing and really help to edify you and equip you as a believer and ultimately, ultimately bring glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, click the subscribe button, click the like button. I thank you guys for joining me today. Remember, God honors you and there is a blessing, whether you believe it or not, you may not feel it right now, but there is a blessing in being persecuted for Jesus Christ. Love each and every one of you. Look forward to connecting with you again here very, very soon. God bless you.